A little, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna help her push the giant. Well, the two of you alone might be able to do it. But you might need help. <laughs> Give it the good old college try, I suppose. I mean, again, you aren't sure where Darby is. And our neighbors just died. Yeah, I heard that. Damn. Oh, call did you? Out for Darby. I did. It sounded like something hit yeah. the floor. Yeah, it something hit my ceiling. <laughs> like it sounded like a ball wow. bounced or something. Like it was we kind of audible. <laughs> yeah, yeah and it would much louder for us than for you. <laughs> and that's a oh. normal occurrence. Holy shit! Every day, oh. multiple yeah. times every day. Mm -hmm. What the hell are they dropping regularly? Well, they, Children. They have, um, oh. They have two two girls under the age yeah. of five, yeah, and that 100 a explains it. And mm. a year and a half old um, labradoodle thing. Mm -hmm. All three of these things I would drop regularly, so that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> drop it like it's hot. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're like constantly throwing the ball down the hall, and then you go clunk, 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 because all three of them follow it. <laughs> that's kind of funny that's hilarious <laughs> alright I mean I guess like my gut reaction would be to push the giant out of the way I haven't even really considered mm -hmm. Darby right and I would call out for Darby oh sure and as you're struggling pushing this thing in like to no it avail move. Yeah. you might realize where's the wait, other one didn't somebody else come through yeah <laughs> Darby. Ow. <laughs> Would we even hear that? Come <laughs> 140 feet away. <laughs> With the bubbling magma in the room. So. Darby, wherever you are, quit messing around and get over here. I guess I'm gonna hobble my way down the rocks. Hey man, mm -hmm. you're still hasted. I'm gonna hobble very quickly down the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to cross this bridge over here, and Darby is very clearly clutching his left arm. How did you get all the way over there? Well, you see, there's a giant. On this side of the room, yes. <laughs> I'll let you piece it together. <laughs> yeah. Did you take an aerial vacation like your brother did? <laughs> My trip was a little extended compared to his. <laughs> I well, think that might have broken my arm, I'm not sure. And just kind of limply dangles his left arm. And I'll say, okay, well then you can use your shoulder. We need to get this giant out of the way so we can meet up and we can uh, finish the job. Did anybody actually bring um, a health kit or a healing kit? Because I did not. Darby, you did. You did, cause you put the the. No, you got you brought fishing tackle, didn't you? Never mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. I was gonna try to splint your arm or whatever, but I guess I'll have to wait. Or hell, here, just come here. Give me your arm. All right. Boing. There's a little bit of healing for you. Good as new. I wouldn't go as far to say new. New, yeah. <laughs> Lightly gently, used. Yeah, my, gently used. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're pushing the giant out of the way and getting this door open. Yeah, we don't know how long he's going to be out for, so we should probably. Be yeah, we quick. gotta shake a tail feather. So 
So, how are you intending to move the giant? Should we push or pull him out of the I'm way? Guessing, I'm guessing we should pull him because those are columns on that side, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And the door is open inwards, so... Yeah, so we should drag him by his feet forward further into the room. Yeah. Open like this. Yep, so I guess I'll okay. position myself like here. Okay. And how is Gimp Darby going to contribute? I got a rope. Uh huh. Tie it around the leg. Okay. Oh, and then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. After some time, you guys do manage to drag it away enough that Egg can open the door. And this oh, hey, you're fun. alive. I was worried. The chain, quickly. Egg Chain's goes dead. to get the chain. <laughs> oh, rest in peace. Sad. So sad. All right. You guys have fixed the chain to the giant. And with the combined might of all four of you, Eventually, haul his ass out. Oh, God. <laughs> and then down the stairs with a thudding bump every single time, uh, you do eventually <laughs> return to the caravan. Uh, do we grab the stuff we left along the way? Along the way? Sure, sure. And return the things that you had encountered. Um, the, the stuff that you discovered, anyway. Mm hmm. We've completed uh, your suicide mission. Uh, as you return the items and, and things of that nature to the, uh, or rather, as you return the giant to the Mad Masks, uh, they kind of swarm around you, and uh, you'll notice that they they kind of pluck at your amulets and chitter excitedly. Um, like, this is the first time you've actually heard noise come from them, and it's not entirely unlike... Uh, have you guys ever heard, like, when a cat gets really excited and they do that little trilling chirp? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. That's adorable, heard... but also terrifying that these things are doing it. Yeah, so the, the first time that you have witnessed this, the broken silence... Um, and so they point to each of the four of you and display their hands in a great wide gesture. Uh, and one of them claps, but the clap, though you can see it's a solid, uh, like the, the, hand, the two left hands meeting, um, makes no noise once again. And you notice that you can no longer hear the chittering. But uh, they gesture to the, to the wagon train and uh, point ahead. And just kind of based off the pantomime, you get the feeling that they're moving you fairly significantly up the train. Um, this is your opportunity to return your gear as well. I return all my gear. Yep, me too. Yep. Returning everything but the hooks I smuggled. Okay. Did I already have you roll a uh, sleight of hand for those? You did. Well, okay. I was taking a leak. Okay. Can I also you're good. pipe up to them? You like... lads got some bandages or something, and I'm going to just oh. like hold my arm limply. Uh... Okay, so you have... A broken arm or a dislocated shoulder or whatever? Something of the sort. Looking to get medical supplies to splint it. Okay. Um, how would they handle this? They just point at your, at your particular cage. If you want me to keep going out and stabbing things, I can't have this healing crooked. They are no longer paying attention to you. Assholes. <laughs> I'll do my best to help you, Darby. 
I'll what the fuck are the they cage. doing up there? I feel like the house is going to come down on top of me. <laughs> Wait, was that from your side? I thought that was outside my window. No, that's above us. I heard like a bump and I thought it was just somebody closing the... I live in a small apartment as well. So like it, it sounds like somebody closed the door to the apartment here. Oh, I'm sitting I'm pretty next sure... to the window and I can hear them like crazy screeching and scrawling up there that's fucking yeah, I'm crazy i'm pretty sure they're running on their heels well of course they are that's what they do every day but to illustrate to our guests what we're dealing with it just imagine a, like somebody running on their heels got that real heavy mm -hmm. yeah crazy anyway anyway uh darby you were saying i'm just gonna go back to the cage and defeat okay anybody else doing anything i'm just ready to take a nap <laughs> yeah no i don't see so, anything Adeline wants to eat so over the next several days uh you are actually brought your typical gruel and meal and things of that nature however uh with a small caveat of uh darby the first evening as you get back uh one of the masks comes over and they have a, a very gentle animal face on it and uh, they kind of gesture you over to the to the edge of the cage did we not get our feast yeah oh we did okay what i said not yet oh did discord not pick me up no I'll see what they want. Ask them um, about our food. As you get over to the edge of the cage where the, the mask member was uh, gesturing you over, you see that they, they pull out a small, it looks like maybe a, like a little geode or something, a small stone, and uh, they, they drag it across the bars of your cage uh, and when they finish, they pull the cage door open where previously there was no cage door, and they gesture for you to step out. I do so. Okay. Um, taking you by the good shoulder, they steer you toward, um, like, a little bit further ahead in the wagon train. You guys realize that you're actually much further ahead now than you were previously. Uh, instead of being two carts away from the literal back end, you're now... Uh, maybe a little bit more than halfway up. And so as uh, as this mask member is walking you forward, you see uh, back behind you, uh, where visibility is usually a bit tougher, uh, that there are probably at least 10 or so wagon trains full of factors um, in, in you know, various numbers, shapes, and sizes, and things of that nature, or at least uh, humanoids. Um, so you're pretty sure that they... You're pretty sure they're factors. So anyway, the, the mask member leads you up towards the front of the train uh, where you see that there is a small gathering of mask members. Uh, you count at least five of them uh, at, near the back of one of the wagons, and she kind of, um, or it kind of gestures you forward. I'm still manacled at this point? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll hesitantly walk forward. Okay. Uh, so as you enter this this little ring of masks, uh, they'll kind of part and and gesture toward uh, what looks to be the amulet that you guys typically wear when you're inside. Only it's a fair bit larger, um, and they're they're going to point to you and point at the amulet. Eye, it's a creepy eye. What of it? Um, they point at you again and point like uh the the one that brought you out uh lifts your good arm, which being manacled to your other one probably doesn't feel that great, uh and and kind of shakes it a little bit and then points at the amulet. You want me to touch it? It looks like the creature is nodding. Uh, 
Oh, all right. Stuck my hands in worse. <laughs> I will place my hand upon the eyeball. All right, as you do so, you feel a sharp tingling sensation for a moment, uh, and then it just kind of stops. And as you as you kind of take your hand away from it, the eyeball inside the the enlarged amulet blinks a few times and then uh, opens widely and casts a projection on the ground uh, in the ring of masks, which shows you pulling out the gun and firing it. And then uh, like it, it, it basically plays through the entire encounter the first time you pulled the gun out and then. Once that's done, it pulls through to the second encounter where the eye locked on and prevented the, the weapon from firing. And then the, all six of the masks there turn to look at you. What of it? They just remain looking at you. In fact, you notice that each of the masks appears to be bearing a uh, a frowning animal face. Um, you send me out there and expect me to not use all the tools at my disposal? Unbidden, images begin to float to your mind, uh, which kind of give you the sense that they are accusing you of foul play or uh for whatever reason the 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 words that kind of fill your mind are like uh not playing fairly or cheating at the game what a hacks were <laughs> <clears throat> what different is it than the spells of the other toss uh, at at the question, uh, the image of a component pouch appears in your mind. Nothing was risked and nothing was gained. Sad you don't know the difference. Hashtag sad. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sad. Some magic need not materials. And it is magic. As you can see, I cannot bring it out wearing these cursed manacles of yours. Uh, all the creatures turn to each other and you get the sense that they're somehow communicating, uh, but you don't hear anything. Uh, they don't really make any hand gestures or anything. They just kind of like occasionally will turn to look at a different one. And then eventually they all turn to look back at you simultaneously and they open like they, they present their hands to you palms up uh, and then close them together. Uh, and then one of them reaches into uh, the chest behind and pulls out a small token. Uh, and on the token, you see it looks like is emblazoned uh, the image of your gun, albeit very crudely, and they show it to you. And then look at you as if waiting un or expectantly for a reply. There would be you images in your head. You. No, no, no. There, there would be images of your head of like various weapons laid out on a table, very similar to similarly to when you choose your uh, inventory for a hunt. I'm sorry, I don't follow. You know this would be significantly easier if you use words. Are projected like the emotion of frustration and disappointment. They tap the amulet and the projection immediately stops. Uh, they snap, they, they toss the coin back in the chest and snap the lid shut uh, and then march you back to the cage uh, where you are bodily just kind of pushed through 
and you'll find that while you were gone, uh, it appears that somebody did leave you a sling and bandages. Though your compatriots that are sharing the, the cage with you saw nor heard anybody approach. Where did they take you? Apparently they weren't happy with something I did. You seem to have all your limbs about you. I didn't catch the first half of that. Yeah, all we heard was limbs about you. You seem to have Discord. your limbs about you. For now, it seems. But I can confirm they are, in fact, watching us. Hmm. I mean, what did you think those eyes were for? Sure, we knew to an extent, but they seem to have a much larger eye that... somehow shows a vision of everything we've done. Neat. Hmm. I don't much care for the idea of our peril and pain being used for the entertainment of others. I'm used to it. Not thrilled, but used to it. Is that something we hear? What? In the chat there? Or is that from something else? Oh, I was just testing something. Oh, okay. Well, it seems they gave you some bandages. And she'll point. It'll do for now, I suppose, but I'd rather this arm didn't heal crooked. I quite like it. Yeah, a crooked arm could add character. Well, if you kind of... You'll always have a story to tell. <laughs> Good icebreaker. Is that something where, like, if he... Like, we can help him. Yeah, I'm wondering to... if we can pop it back into place or something. Yeah. I don't know, because, I mean, mechanically, there isn't really anything for uh, broken limbs. Or rather, we're not using a system that, that works with broken or dislocated limbs. So if this is something that he wants to role play out, then I want to know how he wants to... Like, healing magic can knit wounds. Uh, it can accelerate the healing of broken bones i would say that it wouldn't pop a shoulder back in socket because that's not really an hp kind of deal you know what i mean mm. like um like it can mend broken bones it can knit clothes and open wound it could like it, it doesn't force poison out of your body it doesn't uh, undo, per like, it won't regrow Petalin's eye, that kind of thing. Um, so, if it's dislocated, then it's something that you guys would need to make a, a medicine check or a heal check, whatever, to set. Uh, if he wants, to, like, if he feels that it's broken, then it's something, like, the magic will mend it, uh, but it's not going to be like, oh, okay, your arm's all better now. Right. Unless you cast something that's a little bit more oomphy, like, Maybe maybe less arrest or something. Mm -hmm. I'll say, I'll all right, come here. Let me take a look at one -handed it. One-handed for now. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And then in next combat, I will be limited to only attacking with one hand. Mm. 
Now, I should also point out, if this is something that you're doing to try to manage an escape by faking an injury, telling your GM is a good thing, because I want to enable that. But if it's something you're just role-playing, then that's fine too. Um, keeping secrets from me to do things that are fun for you guys. It, I think we had this conversation. I don't, it, it does not enable me to enable you guys to do the clever things you think of. So, regardless of which way you're leaning, uh, we can progress onward. I mean, I, um, if him, he's complaining about it, I would want to see it anyway. So I'll say, like, come up to the cage. I just want to take a look. Yeah, we would definitely, like, I would be curious as to why my healing spell in the cave didn't, like, help the broken arm. Oh, I am literally well, if, looking to see if it's dislocated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, that's why I said, if it's broken, then the the... Basically, all your healing magic is going to do is, like, everything that a doctor would do to set a broken bone. So, it, like, it'll make sure that it's perfectly aligned and all that jazz. Okay. So, you can make a medicine. Ch is it medicine? Is medicine the 5e skill? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, make a medicine check, pedal in. Oh, all right. Uh, you would have an understanding of what I just said. Like, your character knows that healing magic will set the bone in such a way that it's not going to grow back crooked. So, you know that much. Well, I would, I would tell that to Darby, hearing him complain about it, you know, grow, <laughs> setting crooked and all of that. All right, I'm chewing a sandwich right now. Well, if there's nothing else, then go ahead and move forward. Not hearing any protest. So, uh, basically, what you should consider to be coming up next is, like, the... So, the next day, you guys are going to get your feast. Um, and then, additionally, one by one, the masks allow you each... Uh, around an hour of walking and stretching time outside of your cage each day. Still manacled, uh, but no longer compressed and confined as you have earned a little bit of privilege. And uh, it seems as though a few members of the masks even come over and like uh, fawn over you or dote over you or just kind of uh, show you favor. Um, and, and like they'll pass you bits of like uh, a fruit or a piece of meat uh like you're some endearing animal or 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 attraction to them nice um the next while several here, days uh, oh, go ahead while we're walking around here i kind of want to push some limits um and I'll take pedal in with me. I want to see how they react if I go and try and like get some straight branches. Well, I'm not with you. We only get our exercise one by one. Yeah, individual. Oh, uh, okay. Then I will gauge their reactions to me gathering like two straight branches. Um. So you you wander off a little bit. Yeah, I'm assuming there's, like, sticks and shit laying around. Well, actually, if you... Before you got there, I was going to say you guys had just entered the mountains. You left the, you left the woodlands and have now entered uh, a, a familiar mountain pass, actually. Uh, not to Darby, though. I guess it would be familiar to Petalin and Egg. And potentially so, anon. Can I look to see if I recognize it as the mountain pass where we were first heading into Giants That's, territory? Yeah, that, that was the implication, yes. Okay. Are there any um, convenient sticks laying around? 
<laughs> sure, you can find a stick. Uh, and as you lean down to pick it up, um, you realize, or rather you see that there is actually a, a member of the mask standing with their, uh, their arms folded directly in front of you. You swear they weren't there a second ago. They're looking down at you disapprovingly and slowly shaking their head. Classic. <laughs> Maybe if you were trying to be sneaky, uh, it would be more effective. No, because I'm literally trying to tie it to my arm. Oh. Ah. Well, maybe if you were trying to be sneaky, you could retrieve items before you're noticed. Um, what are you looking for? So you just want sticks? Yeah. I mean, I guess they would be woody mountains. So sure, eventually you'll get a pair of sticks. And then can I use the the bandage they provided to splint my arm? Sure. Is that man still looking at me disapproving? I mean, this is over a period of time of like an hour or whatever. I would I had imagined that you gathered the sticks and then would splint yourself after your walk is over. Mm, okay. But sure, you, you now have a splinted arm and you're back back in your cage. I'm sorry, Egg, what was that? There's just this masked man silently judging him the whole time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just standing right in front of him the whole time. <laughs> like, like walking backwards. <laughs> Anybody else doing anything interesting on their walks? Mm. Egg leaves behind his burlap sack on his walks. Get a little air. Walk nude. In uh -huh. the winter? Yeah. Freshen up. R rather brisk, uh, but sure. Anybody else doing back, anything? Back on when he gets back. Yeah. I would I would like to try to <laughs> sneakily make a mark on one of the trees. Kind of mark which direction we're going in. You try to sneak off trail? No, no, no. Just like not like where they're gonna get mad at me, but just kind of you unnoticed. wouldn't know where they're going to get mad at you or what that is. I, I want you to tell me what you're trying to do. So imagine you're walking up a, a mountain pass and like it's a decent sized trail. Um, it's not super woody. So it's not like there's just trees you can, you know, take three steps to the left and mark one. Mm. Well, sure. I'll see. I'll see how far I can get. Just kind of sneaking a little bit off trail to mark a tree. Okay. Um. Roll stealth. Uh, you realize that it doesn't even look like anybody's paying attention to you as you slip off trail quite easily, uh, and make your way toward a tree. Nice. Okay, so I'd like to just, uh, obviously I don't have a, a knife or anything like that, but I'd like to try to peel off a little bark or maybe use my manacles to kind of scrape or something like that to... Uh... I mean, there are rocks everywhere. <laughs> oh, well, I can do that too. I can maybe use a, use a rock to do an arrow pointing back the direction that we were coming from. Uh, make a dexterity check at disadvantage.
And you want it in the tower? Yes. This is not combat. Um, despite the crudeness of your tools and the unfortunate circumstance of being manacled, you feel pretty confident that you've gotten an arrow chiseled out onto the end of the bark of this tree. Nice. What next? I want to continue doing that every day. Right, but that's not... I, do you go back to the caravan now? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else doing anything? No? Okay. So, uh, you know, like I said, you guys are re receiving your little favors, little bits. Uh, you're all doted on. Everybody's kind of... Like, can tell that the general opinion of you seems to have improved uh, to the extent that maybe you even have fans. Um, the next week, uh, you guys aren't called on once, and only one group of factors is sent out, and they do manage to to drag a um, what looks to be like a small winged creature uh, out of like a little cave, and that gets stuck in, but. Um, it's not too much longer before you start to come out of the mountain pass. A uh, quick question, actually. Where do we know where in the caravan? The... Uh, I think Discord cut you off. Oh, I heard where just... in the caravan. Where in the caravan do we do we know where the giant's being held? Uh, you, if you walk all the way down the caravan, which you would be allowed to do with your time out. Uh, mm -hmm. you would see that the giant is toward the back, but not the furthest back. In fact, you can't even reach the far, the furthest end of the caravan in your hour walk. Okay. Because you have to make it back. Mm -hmm. And where's the Minotaur? Uh, Minos is basically at the very edge of the the factor cages. He's he's uh, actually the first beast cage. Thank you. I'm sorry, he's the first be beast cage from the front? Yeah, so like you have all the factors and then all the all the creatures. Okay. And for anyone wondering what happens when your hour is up, uh, no matter where you were in the caravan, you just kind of find yourself standing back at your cage. Okay. Whoever these people are, they are extremely adept at magic. Something tells me they're using all the factor items to power all of their illusions and spells that they have over us. Maybe it's not so bad, you know? What? Not so bad? What do you mean it's not so bad? I mean, but sure. joining up? Sure, we're in cages, but... There's a new adventure every time we get to go out. We get to see the world this way. Well, I'd rather I, not. I'd really rather have my stuff and my pants and my spangly boots. I wonder, well, maybe if we do a good enough job, we'll get all of our stuff back. Let, let's hope so. Some significant amount of time later, uh, you find yourselves just outside of the mountain pass, uh, approaching what looks to be a moderately sized village. I um, don't know if any of you... Well, I know that Pedalin, Egg, and Darby are not local, so they wouldn't know, but Anon, you might know it. Um, I'm going to quickly look at the map here again. We're pretty far north, though, right? No, you just came out of the mountain pass. Oh, you know what? I don't seem to have the... Is the map under notes, actually? I don't know where it is for you guys. You used to have access to it. It's, uh, I have it on my it's, computer. It's uh, under images and maps, under new. Yeah. I have everything. Oh, under new. Okay, I see. Uh, for some reason, I think I have access to everything Wolf has put in here.
because there is a lot of maps for me. What's it named? Yeah, there probably are. Nightfall, Nightfall Age? Nightfall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Cool. Would you say we're by Moonfall on this map? No. You are... Uh, let's see. I would say the furthest north I'd probably be was Moonfall-ish. Where you guys are going, this would be Sunrise Valley. Uh, yeah, probably not. Okay. All right, so you guys are coming up on a small village. Um, as you approach, you see that it almost looks as though it has been converted into maybe a sort of war camp. And it's not long uh, before the, the figures that come into view are very clearly of the more green-skinned variety. Uh, you can tell that there are... Uh, as they might say, that pinks living among them, but it is clear uh, to at least Petalin and Egg that the orcs have made their way this far. Well, this is the furthest south you guys have been, so you're not sure if they were here before, but this is definitely uh, an orc-controlled village. Um, the the few non-greenskins that are, that are moving around uh, do so with the kind of prey fright, uh, or they're, they're very skittish, they, they don't make eye contact, and uh, as the caravan pulls into or just outside of the village itself, uh, you see a couple of members of the masks break off and head into the village directly. Um, eventually, a much larger orc uh, emerges that looks uh, to be some sort of chief of some sort, maybe, uh, and begins perusing the various cages. He grunts uh, in, in... Actually, do any of you guys speak Orc? No. No. Nope. No. He'll grunt in the language that nobody understands, uh, point at a few different cages. Uh, it seems as though he is somehow communicating with the masks, but you aren't sure how. Um, and then uh, before too much longer, they do eventually come to your cage, uh, and he, he looks you up and down, he, he speaks with his two escorts, um, and nods fervently and definitely points at you uh, multiple times. And then they go off. Um, as evening comes, the, the carts are kind of drawn around the village, almost surrounding it um, as much as they can. And you see that the masks have set up almost like a, like a, a little miniature amphitheater. Oh, no. With like bench seats and stuff and things like that. Oh no! What? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> uh, and as they do so, uh, they they bring out a large chest from one of the lead wagons uh, and haul out from it a much um, like a like they as they open it up and it kind of does that tackle box thing. You see that it is filled with those same golden eyeball amulets. Uh, and you can see they meticulously select a few of them and then pass those off to another member of the masks who then goes and gets a few things set up. Uh, many of the members of the village come and uh, pretty soon the amphitheater is full. Uh, all of its seats are filled. Uh, a couple of pinks mixed in with most of the green skins. And then, uh, much perhaps to the surprise of everybody, uh, the show begins. And the Mad Masks basically use the, the amulets to project uh, the various deeds and exploits of the, the factors that they have in their service. And oh. uh, it's, it's kind of like a show. And uh, you get to see several factor groups which could just get mauled or eviscerated or killed. Um, and, and you probably see like six or seven different little adventures before finally yours appears. Uh, and it seems as though they have selected uh, your first encounter uh, against the Ochug, the, the three-legged uh, aberrant creature. And uh, so you all now get to witness from a perspective other than your own uh, 
your own heroic exploits and deeds. And orcs cheer and they growl and they shout and you can tell that they're all really kind of getting into the spectacle. And um, as the night comes to a close, uh, um, a group of masks approaches your cage, uh, opens it, and gestures for each of you to come out. I do so. Me too. Yep. Uh, Anon, having seen this before, you'll know what's coming. Uh, am I worried about it? <laughs> you would be moderately worried. Okay. Uh, uh, so you see that that much larger orc is now handing something over. Uh, it looks like a small crude box to one of the masks. Uh, and then he looks over in your direction and he smiles. Uh, and you see that they have brought forth um, one of the beasts. And they are wheeling it to the center of the amphitheater as they gesture you all forward. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Anon, what's going on? I think they... think they want a live show. Ah, oh, no. Is it like sunset or evening? Dusk. Evening? Dusk. Can I try and look around and see if I can spot the bat? Uh, yeah, make a perception check. Ah, my tower's in the wrong spot. Uh, try as you might, the various fire and smokes filling the air from the, the village uh, makes it very difficult to see anything that would be that small, and you're unable to locate the bat. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as you can kind of get a feel for what's going on here, this is a... Oh, Petalin and Darby, or Petalin and Egg, you've seen one of these before. As the the huge cage is wheeled forth. Uh, the last time you saw a creature that matched this, uh, or rather the last time you saw a creature that looked like this, uh, was back when you were still fresh in Nightfall. Uh, and a young pixie had to unleash her power to keep you all safe. Oh, well. Oh joy. Uh, it is a great six legged serpent creature with horns and uh two arms and claws. Uh, actually one, two, three, four. Ten legged. I guess it just depends on which version you're looking at. Let's see, what does it look like in, in here? Okay, I think this is the, the six-legged version. Uh, images and maps. That is 10. Yeah. Great. Ah. Uh. As they as they kind of get you guys into the center of what looks to be a makeshift arena, uh, they wheel out the chests and open them up. And this time, much to your surprise, you see that some of your own belongings are mixed in. You may choose one of your original belongings each. And then equip yourself with uh, one additional, you know, so, so two weapons total. Armor and two uh, pieces of adventuring gear or wondrous items. And of those five pieces of total gear, one of them can be one of your originals. So two weapons, armor, adventurous gear. And, and two, two weapons, 
Yeah, two yeah. weapons, two pieces of adventuring gear, and armor. Is that token that they showed me in there? Yes. Well, I don't think we're going to be stealthy, so let's suit up. Is my eye in there? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I might pass on that one. <clears throat> Man, too bad we didn't have that genie still. I know, right? This is a genie moment. <laughs> Technically, Lena still has it with one charge left. But we're not Lena. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what I want so for there... the hunt, for the adventuring <laughs> gear. Is there any alcohol in the adventuring gear? Mm, no, I believe that is not part of adventuring gear. Shame. Should be. Ivy. Nope. No booze. Okay, I got my stuff. We get two items. Yes, two adventuring gear, two weapons, and one armor. And any one of those five can be one of your original pieces. Share what you're choosing, or you. Yeah. Um. Uh, can I take the devouring edge and a halberd and the halberd devouring edge? It takes too long. <laughs> okay. Nice try. I appreciate it. Then I'll just take the devouring agenda. Chapel. Half plate, and I'm going to take uh, two potions. Okay. Okay, I know what I'm taking. I'm going to take a tinder box and some oil. Uh, I only had one inventory item picked, but if you're doing that, I'll take a, a second thing of oil as support. I'm guessing the oil is just in like... 
a flask of some sort. Yes. Sorry, I realized you were asking me. Yeah. Okay. Actually, oh, yeah. can I just take a halberd <laughs> instead of the javelin? Even if I can't feed it to it now in case the or two to arrive. Yeah, that's fine. All right, I'll take this light crossbow, a dagger, uh, the studded leather armor, and then with my adventuring gear, I'm going to take my original arcane focus and fuck it off some caltrops, I guess. Are you only able to wear light armor? Yes. Uh, which is fortunate for me because I'm part warlock but before that I couldn't warlock. even do that it's unfortunate if you so. take a hit mm -hmm. anybody else I guess I guess that's basically everybody. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, did I not fully list? No, you just oh. told me oiled. <laughs> yes, component pouch, breastplate, the gun token, and my magical rapier. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll tell you everything I have too. Then. So I took full plate. Um. I took. The oil, longbow with arrows, a short sword, and um, the tinderbox. What magic item did you take? Oh, sorry, I didn't say, yeah, the slippers. Oh, okay. Of climbing. Um, this is a moment where I am perhaps a little surprised nobody has volunteered the bow that the group found to the man who uses a bow. Oh, this shit, I friend. didn't even think about that. We don't even know what it does. Exactly. It <laughs> explode in your hands when you fire it. Well, what? I mean, would he see this magnificent bow amongst our gear? Um... Sure. So you see a bow which looks as though it has been very intricately and elegantly carved. Uh, it doesn't have a string, but um, it's oh. it's a very it's a very jagged looking bow. I mean, it's 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 in the table of like magic items, or rather, in in the hanger of magic items. Sorry, I thought you meant like a magic item we have. I don't have that because I'm not part. Of, I wasn't part of their group. Right, well, but you guys you, are all mushed together now. If you will ask us about it, I will offer it to you. Honestly, if I saw a bow without a string, I would think it's useless crap. <laughs> Probably. It's like, wait, what? Well, I, bows I would aren't ask, stored with their strings. I would ask you about it, but like, I'd be like, what is that? It's a magic bow. <laughs> Probably good. I don't know. It's probably pre-sundering. Wait, you have a pre-sundering bow. What does it I do? Mean, it wouldn't By be my... the first. By my reckoning of time, I'd say it's pre-sundering. Uh, we never got a chance to find out. None of us exactly use a bow. That, and soon after we got it, we were clonked upon the head and brought here. Mm-hmm. Care to test it out on this, our next <laughs> adventure? Like, honestly, it seems like a bad idea, but <laughs> sure. Let's try out the bow. No one knows what it does. Okay. Don't worry, uh, we you got can... your back. I mean, it's in the magical know. hangar, so it must be good. Yeah, well, it's a long bow. That's all you know for now. Uh, so okay. run me through what you were taking again. Sorry, me? Yes. Uh, I'm guessing the thing you're going to ask about is the plate. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I, know the, I know that as a fighter, you have heavy armor proficiency. Oh, I see. So now I have an extra item, is what you're saying, because that counts as... Well, I, 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 actually, tell me what you were bringing before the bow. 
Okay. So it was a short sword, mm-hmm. a uh, flask of oil, a mm-hmm. tinder box, the breastplate. Oh, see, so that that's that's where. So you wouldn't be able to have the oil and tinder box and slippers. Oh, I see. Because that would count as the adventuring gear. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So Just make sure. Um, no, but nobody's bringing more than five total items to this. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So then I just I'm not taking that. I guess. Uh, this is much larger than I want it to be. What the creature we're facing? Right. Yeah, me too. Mm- <laughs> no, the uh the map that I had, it's bigger than I thought. Oh. Just make us big. Uh this might actually be perfect. By the way, I'm legit blaming you three if this bow does explode when I try to use it. <laughs> <laughs> we literally did not have the time to Identify. Yeah, they, they they got it, and then they got bopped on the head. <laughs> In that order. Uh... What a weird twist of fate that I would roll a ranger and you guys would get a bow. <laughs> well, even if you didn't, I was going to feed it to my gun. Uh, I mean, you still might be able to if it explodes in my face. <laughs> Suicide bow. <laughs> Every arrow shot from it attacks the user. Yes. Babe. Move these around. Would it be crazy? Counts as a surprise attack with sneak attack damage. Well, shit, you guys, would it be crazy if we, like, instead of Caltrops, I took that glass heart that we got from Spira? We gave it to Lena. Mm. Oh, did you? Did we? I didn't. I don't think we did. I thought we left it to get looked at. Oh, you right. You are. You are. You right. You are right. correct. I don't remember that. What? When? When was that? We that stopped into notes? Treetop for the funeral. And we yep. left it yeah. with yep. grills. That's true. I remember. Oh, we left it with grills because grills has nature magic. And he said Lena would probably know better, but no idea when she's going to be back. Because mm-hmm. she was heading okay. to Twin River Valley. All, All right. right. So. Oh, bummer. Okay. You guys can arrange yourselves in this arena as you see fit as the creature is going to be wheeled in after. Take steps to the center of the stage. Yep. Stretches. Touches his toes. Does that re- reach around? Side pivot? Reach around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, you don't uh, want to use that the, term. The, the baseball stretch? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh, Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to summon the gun and tuck it into my belt. Okay. He undoes all his straps, then redoes them. Because he's a baseball player. Okay. So, uh, the obviously not one-to-one here, as the, the back wall of the temporary Coliseum arena would be opened. Uh, and this is kind of how they would have it set up for like the projections. Uh, so like that north side is kind of open. They wheel a big cage in, uh, and like so it, it's like here inside the cage. And uh, the masks look at you, and then they look at the cage, and then you don't see a horn, but you definitely hear a horn blast sound. Uh, and the cage door f- like springs open, and everybody rolls initiative. Do you think Don't we're allowed quick. to kill it this time? I don't actually know. <laughs> the Bahir acts first. How did you roll a nine initiative? Because I rolled a, what, two? 
Wow. <laughs> Seven. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Darby, piss pants, terrified, acts slow. Uh, One handed Darby. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, back it to comes, battle music. It comes out like lightning and goes straight to egg. Uh, oh wait, I no, wouldn't even hold on, hold on, hold on. It's got something better. Uh, right, that's how everybody is is aligned. Mm -hmm. Yep, guys. I assume I would have my weapon ready. Hmm. Since I know what we're here for. Well, yeah, but you were stretching. So give me a 50-50. Oh, <laughs> give me a 75-25. Okay. Oh, we're all percentile, right? Yeah. He was using the weapon to stretch. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Nice. 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 <laughs> Uh, you can have inspiration to start the combat <laughs> for such a nice roll. All right, so the creature comes out. Uh, I think technically this is less movement. It's going to come here. And uh, you get this intense smell of atmosphere. Uh... Intense smell of atmosphere as the creature opens its maw, uh, gaping and enormous as it is. Uh, and egg, you witness the cr like this crackling, like furious energy inside of its mouth as it spits forth a, a, a bolt of lightning. Shit. Uh oh. Egg has failed his save. Uh, uh, if it's a deck save, I have advantage. Oh, uh, if I can see it. Okay. Roll the second one. Should I just roll a d20 or roll a deck oh. save? Yeah. Oh, actually, hold on. Yeah. I can just roll a deck save. Still failed. Okay. Use your inspiration. Oh my 75 god. damage. Oh my god. Just... <laughs> Jesus. You're both just zapped. Um... Should he use inspiration? A non... Can I get a dex save from those orcs? It doesn't go that far. What? <laughs> Bullshit right now. Uh, Anon, I need you yeah. to roll a percentile die. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, there it is. We will always presume that high is good for the players. Okay. Oh. Uh, you notice that the bow in your hands uh, begins to to thrum and hum with energy. Oh shit! Okay, Anon, you have the initiative. All right. Um. Oh my god, this is gonna take like a turn to set up. Okay, I want to pour the flask of oil into the bottom of the quiver. Okay. And the idea is, is I'm going to light the bottom of the quiver, or I'm going to light the arrows on fire every time I pull. Is this a thing I can do? Run that by me one more time. The basic idea is, is I'm making it so that the oil is at the bottom of the quiver, so the tips are fire have fire on it 
and I want to every time yeah, I like where, shoot an where, arrow. Mm -hmm. Where is the fire coming from in this? Well, I will lit like the bottom. Basically, okay, I'm gonna pour it in to the quiver so that they're kind of like swimming in at the very bottom where the tips are. Then I'm gonna light the bottom of the quiver on fire and put it down on the ground, and I'm gonna like draw from it essentially. Won't that just burn your arrows up? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, I okay. So if you pour oil in the bottom of the quiver, yeah, and then you light the bottom of the quiver. The flames are going to go up the wooden shafts of the arrows. Not if I lay it on the ground, though, right? Then your well, oil is no, going to run sideways yeah. across oh, yeah, then, your yeah, right. arrows. This would be easier if I had a bowl. Yes. <laughs> you light your tinderbox on fire <laughs> and just leave it on the ground. I mean, I will, sure. I just need a fire source, essentially. Mm. Okay. Am I able to light the tinderbox on fire? Like, is it just like a wooden box with some, like, tinder yeah, supplies but it's in match it? You'd be sitting there holding it, waiting for it to light. <laughs> <laughs> just blowing on it a little bit. It's kind of funny. Yeah, like... <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> Actually, all right, I want to see what this bow does, though, also, because it's, like, powered up or something. Fuck it. Let's do this either way. Uh, we're going to cast Hunter's Mark on it as my bonus. Okay. And let's see what happens when I shoot it with the bow. Okay. So you, you draw an arrow... Uh, realizing that you never got a string for the bow, but it seems as though you don't need one as lightning connects the two tips of the end. And you realize now that the shape of the bow is not entirely unlike the fictional fantasy of a lightning bolt uh, curved so that it would be bow shaped. Oh. And so as you draw the arrow back, lightning crackles down the arrow itself from the bow string. That seems good. Nice. Disintegrating the arrow. It's made of wood. <laughs> Instantly, yeah. Uh, that is it a hit. Hilarious. If you had did a bow. <laughs> um. That is a hit. Uh, so in this instance, roll normal bow damage plus two d six lightning damage. Ooh. So you can add to the longbow in the damage properties, I believe, the, the 2d6 lightning damage. Yeah, I'll add it for the uh, next one here. Yeah. However, you see that the lightning seems to dissipate against the hide of this creature. Okay, and then I'm going to use my reaction right now as well to... Oh, I don't have a thing here. So I'm going to make it a wisdom check to see if, if it has any natural weaknesses. Um, so make your wisdom check. Okay. You want this in the tower or just here is fine? It's combat. You can make it out. Okay. Shit, that was the wrong thing. Hold on. Uh, does it have any vulnerabilities? It does not. This creature has no natural vulnerabilities or weaknesses. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, wait. I only did one attack, didn't I? Sorry. Yes. I have one more. Then you can go, Egg. Okay. Okay. That is a hit. Okay, I'm just quickly adding the 
damage here. So 2d6, right? Yep. And that's lightning, specifically? Yes. Okay. Right. Well, did you... Don't forget your Colossus Slayer. Uh, Colossus Slayer is only if it... Oh, it took damage. You're yeah. right. Okay. You can you can basically keep that on yourself because I believe it has a qualifier of if the target is wounded. I mean, that's what it that, does, that yeah. IFT, yeah, so just leave that on yourself. But it's only for, like, one attack, which is why I can't, right? Because yeah. it has to expire. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's... But I think, it, I think it does expire after you do it, though. Oh, yeah. That's true. Okay, so then that's a D8 added on top. So an, one more. <laughs> okay. Hell yeah. Eat that Colossus. Again, you see that the, the it just seems to like absorb or, or like disperse the lightning from the arrow. Okay, egg. Har like not harmed. Egg. The initiative is yours. All right. So after egg gets like wrecked by lightning he's <laughs> kind of standing there limp until he just starts screaming <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right goes into a rage uh, he's gonna trigger reckless attack and uh, great weapon master. Okay. And slash the devouring break spear. Okay, that is a hit. This is a huge target size. Um, huge, yes. Okay. Well, I think I will use a combat superiority die. To trigger a menacing attack, okay. should auto roll when I roll the damage. And a slash. There is a one in there. But I think that's the. That's for the battle die, which I don't think counts as the thing I re-roll. Because that's what is just the like... th what's the thing that lets you re-roll them? Uh, I think it's is it great weapon fighting? It's one of those because I have great weapon fighting, great weapon master, and I get them confused in my head. If you roll a one yeah, or two weapon. on a damage die for an attack you make with a melee weapon that you're wielding with two hands, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. Yeah, but the... And that's from the combat superiority? Yeah. Combat superiority, you roll the die as part combat maneuver and then just add that to the damage though i don't There's think it's a works uh, sage advice post on the D, &D website mm -hmm. is meant to only benefit damage rolls of the weapon with the feature 
I okay. hope your paladin so, used divine smite with a great sword does not let you reroll a one or two for divine smite. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Good to know. All right. Twenty-one damage. As you rip uh, a, a fresh rent of um, blue, you know, a fresh rent in the creature, blue black blood oozes from within. Uh, it has failed its save. All right. It is now frightened. Okay. Gary, dude. I like the little sad face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's corner. really good. Is that the only icon you guys see in the little corner? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, it keeps the other ones hidden. All right, now we'll slash again. Another hit. All right. Uh... 20 additional damage. And I will use my action surge to get two more attacks. Okay. That is a miss. I will use combat superior. Did I do a precision strike? Add eight to Hit. that. Oh. Uh, only one more. Slash again. Uh, another miss. You have inspiration. I don't think I want to use my inspiration there. I'm going to use my inspiration to maybe dodge a death thing. throw or something. Yeah. Oh, you could have used it on that saving throw. I could have. I should have. Uh. Yeah, that's all my actions. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. Wearing our oh, old. Oh, hold on, let me let me color some here, so it's not just like yes. I slash at it. So yeah, yeah. what was that? Four, terrifies. four attacks. Four attacks. So, egg, uh, just singed and smelling very strongly of atmosphere and sulfur. Like uh, it probably uh, the, any any non-metallic items that he's wearing are are like smoldering. Maybe even there's some small fires. Uh, so he just loses it. Like he fucking Goodbye, screams. Yeah, just like like the ground shakes around his feet uh, when he just like unleashes this primordial shout. And he pulls out the devouring edge, and uh, the weapon itself like it, it mutters like a oh fuck when it sees this thing. And, and so as as it gets swung the first time. Uh, and he rips open the the thick flesh of the Bahir. Uh, the, you hear not only Egg's primal yell, but the the devouring edge of like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so three more quick swings follow up, and like Egg battles this thing backwards, like that this monstrous, enormous creature like uh, is is stepping back as it gets hacked and slashed by uh by the magical. What, the break spear, I think, is what it current its current form. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so just just being rent asunder, you know, cut to ribbons, uh, and it's it, this like thick blue black oozy blood, uh, which again sm just reeks of of like storm, uh, and, and eventually 
egg has to stop to breathe, and, and so the the creature gains a a, a respite. <laughs> okay, pedal in. Okay. Back wearing our old uh, arcane focus around our neck, we feel like an old friend has come to help us in battle. Wait, is that one of the, the adventuring items you took? Yeah, my original arcane focus. Yeah. That was one of my adventuring gear. Uh, I gotcha. And then I took okay. caltrops. Okay. Yeah. What magic item did you take? We were only allowed five items. The Yeah. Did you take a magic item, I'm asking? Yeah, the arcane focus. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, so wearing the old arcane focus, feeling like you have an old friend come to help you in battle... She scoops up a, a, a bit of dirt or sand in each hand and goes <sighs> blowing it out of both hands and it, and it swirls around Egg and Darby and they feel invigorated so we hasten them. Okay. And she yells, let's fucking kill this thing! Nice. Should always have pocket sand ready. <laughs> pocket sand! <laughs> okay. Alright. Stop. Stop targeting them, please. That would be great. Okay, thanks. Okay. Of course, all of this is met with the whoops and hollers. Uh, I see egg is hasted. Okay. Okay. Target self. Put the concentration on, please. Thank you. All right. And then, true to form, She turns those two of same hands into the here. Sick and tired of this snake in this arena. An Elkins blast. That is a miss. That is a hit. So the first blast sails wide and the second strikes home. Sending some of that blood that's flowing, splattering outward as it's impacted by the, the force damage of Eldritch Energy. Darby starts Darby. his turn by spitting some sand out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's speed uh, sand. He's going... <laughs> he's going to level the gun at the creature and a uh, a bit of shadow starts forming around it and spectral tentacles wrap around the monster and it is Hexblade's Cursed. Okay. Move over, take first fire at it. Nice. That is a hit. Which is then a crit on a 19 with Exploit's Curse. Whoa. Nice. Thanks, sneak attack. <laughs> and then we will bonus action. No, I use my bonus action. Mm -hmm. So then this would be Act weapon fire. Hey. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
and then hasted action fire. I saw Another it and I got excited. <laughs> and then it was sad. Yeah, well, can't always be crits. All right. Uh, as you rack the creature with uh, magic bullets, punching more holes into its hide, uh, it now has the opportunity to act. I did not do that. All right. So with Egg being the closest creature and the one that's done the most to it, uh, it's going to target him. First attempts to constrict around him. Can I gravity well him? Yes. Oh, wait, don't, because he already has advantage and disadvantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it would be a waste. Uh, well, okay. actually, hold on, hold on. Do they multiple sources? I'm just gonna put that on me right now. Ivy. Any numbers? I have neither. Okay, so it doesn't say. So yeah, don't don't waste your spell slot because it won't do anything. Okay. It. Attempts to wrap itself around Egg and constrict him. Does so. Rendering him unconscious. Egg, no. Egg, no. And then swallowing him whole. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> uh... How large is this creature's head? Big enough to swallow uh, a medium or smaller target. Okay. So we're just going to move egg over here. It's step down here. <clears throat> it shouldn't be frightened anymore because they can't see me. Ah, that's true. <laughs> gonna step down and ever the gluttonous creature attempt to bite darby as well all gravity well darby okay well targeting egg but uh it misses Darby. As you see its jaws coming in for what would have sure, like been a sure strike, uh, possibly even bisecting you. Uh, but then like suddenly they're paused and you're able to very neatly step out of the way as they snap shut where you were a moment before. Uh, Anon, you have the initiative. Nice. All right. Oh, I have to refresh Hunter's Mark every time, I guess. Uh, or, or I guess. wait, do I put it on me? Ugh. It may not have... You may need an extra D6 of damage if you didn't put it on yourself. Okay, I'm going to try putting it on me this time. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's that's on... It's a concentration thing, so... Gotcha. Um, okay. So whenever you after you do all this, roll one additional d6 for last round as well. Okay. So did it then give the creature an additional 1d6 of damage? I don't know. No. Two quick shots in succession. Yeah, they they both hit. Okay. That's the first one. Okay. That's the second. 
Yeah, so you definitely need two more D6, actually. Two more? Okay. Yeah, because you, you hit it twice. Uh, so seven Seven total. additional. Uh, that is actually just enough. Hey! To uh, slay the creature as both arrows find, like, critical points inside of its throat. Hopefully not skewering egg. Um... As it, you know, it re it rears up on its hind legs, uh, towering over everybody, and then slamming into the dirt to the raucous cheer of all the orcs and, and goblins and such in the crowd, and like they're all banging their fists and thumping their feet against the the floor. And uh, though you don't understand the language, you can certainly tell that they seem to be entertained. <laughs> um, what now? I mean, I'm gonna use my movement to run up to see. This is all kind of like, I don't even hear it because I'm worried about eggs. So I run up to s start like mm -hmm. helping him, but obviously my turn's over. So. Okay. Fails a death saving throw. Can I use inspiration on that? Sure. That is a pass. Nice. I think you can, you should be able yeah, to I, change that yourself. Yeah, I took off the fifth. Okay. okay. Uh, pedal in. Uh, moving up quickly, I draw my dagger. And. Gosh, I don't want to like. Just start <laughs> hacking away at it or I might hurt egg. Can I start to, you know. Like, maybe start at the top of the jaw and, like, move down, like, where the throat would be, just trying to cut him, like, gut him tip to tail. Make an attack roll with advantage. Yeah! Dagger time. Hell yeah. Um, you weren't targeting the creature, but oh. that, that is enough. So... You do manage to get the dagger past its impressively thick hide. Um, and of course, like several orcs are now swarming the, the arena and, and like coming in to try and grab and pick you up. So you, you know, acting quickly. So, um, you go ahead and start cutting it open. It's a slow process because you're having to drag with all your might against this thing's thick fucking skin uh, and trying to cut it open like it's some sort of tauntaun. Uh, you do not cut a man-sized hole in its throat. I do not. Nope, you've got like half of your height. Remember, you've this is six seconds. Sure. All right. Well, I guess that's my turn because I can't I can't heal him if I can't see him. Yep. Darby. I mean, I guess I start muted? helping oh. to cut. Okay. Um, how are you cutting? Or you just want to, like, take the dagger out of her hands and keep going? I mean, I have my blade that's probably sharper. True. Uh, well, I mean, it's a rapier. It's not a slashing weapon. But you said it was a dueling sword, so it has an edge. At the tip, yeah. Just use your gun, God. <laughs> <laughs> just Start shoot it open <laughs> yeah blow a hole in it give it a, yeah turn it into a dolphin or a whale yeah <laughs> give it a blow hole that was the joke we just have to see him just rip some skin open or just take my dagger and just go for it like yeah, it's already I'll, in I'll there just the press down her and... okay so, uh, I'd say you get a pretty chi sizable chunk. Uh,
Okay. So you, you get a pretty big chunk out of there. Uh, you're pretty sure you can see your brother's foot. Only just. I've already used my action, so I can't yank well, him. You, well, You're you have haste, so actually, yeah, haste. So I would say you could try. As a strength check. All right. So you haul him out partially. Is for despite the creature's death, it is still like the the natural should reaction should I give you that of a disadvantage because I'm one armed. Yes, you should. Nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the natural biology of swallowing is still fighting against you. Um, so you, you manage to drag him like halfway out of the creature. If only the 18 had been your role, maybe you could have gotten him all the way out. But, uh, natural digestion acid inside the creature. That would be 14, so you automatically fail a death saving throw, taking damage. Okay. Anon. Okay, I can see him? Yep, he's halfway out of this thing. Alright. I'm just gonna run my hand over the short sword, and then it just starts to, like, fester and, like, get all gross. And mm -hmm. I'm going to transfer some of my life force into him. Okay. So he gets 30 health. No longer unconscious. No longer... Well, you are still blinded, restrained, and prone. Yeah, we but still have to get him out, but at least he doesn't have to worry about the saving throws anymore. No, you're you're still hasted. That doesn't go away. <laughs> oh, really? She's maintaining this spell on you. I'm concentrated as fuck. So now that you're alive, maybe struggle to try to help us help you out. <laughs> oh, actually, that was top of the round on the Bahir. So the orcs would have actually swarmed in and just pulled him out. Uh, oh. And, like, everybody's getting lifted in the air and, like, paraded around the arena. Um, nice. So you would have... So you're, you're, like, in the air while you cut yourself and heal him. Do you have to touch him to do that? No, 30 feet. Okay, so then, yeah, you, you cut yourself while you're being hoisted through the air uh, and, and managed to heal him back to consciousness. Uh, so everybody's getting like bodily hauled to this arena and like it's it's almost deafening with this many orcs all shouting and chanting and grunting and you kind of have a little bit of celebrity moment. Uh, but just a moment later, just as Egg regains consciousness, uh, there is a quick boom and like dust flies out of the arena uh, as a, a single mask member stands in the center uh, of a small crater about about a foot deep where they landed, uh, so they like they created this divot, uh, and the orcs like immediately stop uh, and turn to look at this thing, and you can sense the animosity growing, uh, and the the mask claps their hands together, and it too is a thunderous cacophonous boom, and uh, all the orcs kind of take a step back, and they very slowly low and gently lower each of you to the ground, and all retreat to the stands. Um, the mask turns to the two uh, larger orcs, uh, that, or I guess it was just the one. Uh, the, the one large orc that was observing from above, the one you saw that was pointing earlier, uh, and he, he nods uh, singularly, uh, brings out a big like chest from behind him, or gestures to it, and the two bugbears near him uh, go and grab that and bring it down to the arena, uh, whereupon it was where it is presented to the mask. Um, the mask places their hand on the chest, uh, and then you see that it, it fades from sight. 
Uh, and then very quickly and efficiently, the orcs disperse after be after commands are barked from the big one, and you guys are left to stand alone uh, in the arena with the now corpse of the Bahir uh, ringed by mask members. There would be one, two, one at each cardinal direction. Is a, a moment to to speak amongst yourselves or what have you? How you feeling, Egg? Oh, I'm alive. So that there's monster, that. That monster had eggs for dinner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can keep it down. More though. troubling is that we've just been bought. Oh, I don't know about that. I think the monster was bought. So, Anon, what do you think of your bow? His bow? <laughs> well, I'm certainly not going to use it. I'm uh, not Egg sure would... what to think. Egg would want to know, ask the Devouring Edge what he could tell about where he was being kept. What do you mean? Oh, 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 like where, where he's been. Yeah. Um, he says it is a void not entirely unlike uh, the, the magical bag that Diedrich carried. Gotcha. Excuse that's... me. That's my bag now. Uh, the uh -huh. the devouring edge uh, quips back and says, "Why don't you talk to your own weapon?" <laughs> Sick burn. Damn. <laughs> I'm just kind of looking. It's like, why are you, are you talking to your weapon? Why is it talking? <laughs> and then, the, yeah, then the weapon talks. <laughs> Speaking of. You've been awfully quiet for such a blabbermouth you are. Also, now that we have a respite, I'm going to try I've to I've been busy, the, it says. The devouring Are edge, the halberd. I think I am talking sure to my gun, yes. At. A follow-up there? To what? He's been busy? Yes. No, I just assume he's an asshole. Okay, that's fine. All right, so uh, after a few moments have passed, uh, you'll see the each of the cardinal masks, or the, the masks at cardinal directions, will, will slowly approach you, uh, and they will gesture uh, to a table that seems to almost materialize before you. Uh, which is, you know, they, they open a chest and it's the, the, the magic items and equipment and stuff like that. The usual uh, disarm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yep, I do so. Likewise. I'm going to put the Devouring Edge and the Halberd together, give the Devouring Edge a chance to eat. <laughs> but okay. Then I will put them on the table. Sure. You can see the devouring edge is like slowly <laughs> inching toward it. Like it, it's it's managing to drag itself somehow. You aren't sure. You don't see. However, it's it's m manipulating its body to do so. Uh, but just before it can really latch on and start to to devour, um, mm -hmm. the masks separate them from magical and mundane. Mm -hmm. I put my things on the table. And then I put my gun on the table and look at the mask in the mask eyes and then mm -hmm. snap and the gun disappears. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, masks are largely expressionless, but it does look as though it's frowning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so after this, you guys will be returned to your cage. Uh, the 
festivities and revelries of the night uh, begin to pick up as as it truly becomes nightfall. And shortly thereafter, a a mask returns. Uh, and as you are all manacled, uh, they they kind of bring you out uh, and parade you through the village. Uh, and in like again, you don't understand the language, but you can definitely get the sentiment. Uh, but as they're doing so, like the the masks have are like projecting into your into your minds this image of celebration and, and congratulation and uh, and reward. And uh, so for the first night since your capture, uh, you're actually allowed to sleep outside of your cages. Holy shit! Nice. Was Egg provided with another burlap sack? It's yes. Uh, in, in fact, uh, and given your status and stature within the caravan, you are each clothed. Oh, wow. They're commoners' clothing, but it's, it's commoners' clothes, but you are, you are no longer potatoes. I never thought I would miss pants so much. Mm, we have ripened. Can I Egg. try once more to look for the bat? Sure. Give me another perception check. Do not spot the creature anywhere through the entire night's revelry. Anybody else doing anything? Or want to do anything? I guess if they were if they were changing our clothes, I would have had to sneak the hooks from the sack. True. Uh, so give me another sleight of hand. All right. Solid. Uh, you feel very confident that you were able to do so. Uh, maybe sneaking the hooks underneath your tongue while the while the clothing was changed. Um, after things kind of die down or whatever, and I guess we're left to go to sleep, can I attempt to wander off somewhere? You outside can certainly of the village? Uh, well, I mean, you, you're bound to your four groupmates by chain. Okay. You guys are, are a little prisoner chain. Well, I'd like I'd like to discuss maybe we try to sneak out a little bit and see if the Twice King will come to us if we're kind of out in the open a little bit. Do we have the amulets on? Yes. No. I I don't think he we need it to, for him to find us if he's still following us at this point. No, I meant the ones that they put on the eyes. Oh. But we're still manacled, okay, right? Yeah. We can't cast spells. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you are not wearing the, the eye amulet. Yeah, we could sneak off for a bit. It's fine. We're not, be, we're not being watched necessarily. As inherently as we might be. Well, can I try and initiate my master escape plan? You can certainly try. Do you have a master escape plan? I've been setting this up for weeks. Well, let's hear it. Is it running? Okay, I'm gonna take the fishing hooks and try and bend them into something I can use to lockpick. Okay. I will allow you to make a check at disadvantage using the makeshift lockpicks. Should I just roll that as thieves' tools? Yes. No proficiency bonus, disadvantage. Improvised tool. Can I put a negative here? Oh, maybe. I don't know, man. 
You might get us in trouble, and we're finally making our way up the train chain. Um, despite your best efforts, the uh, and actually, I'm going to let you see this. Despite your best efforts, uh, the lock in the manacles themselves provide, or proves too complex for such a makeshift improvised tool. Unable to free yourself. Well, stopped at the very start. Might be for the best. I guess for meta knowledge, the goal was to get out of the manacles and then use the wood from the splint to try and create some friction smoke. And then with the bandage provided, that gives me the material cost for gaseous form. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of stuff you should tell me because it's neat. Well, I needed to get out of the manacles first because I can't do anything in them. That's true. Okay, so, so can is... We... Yeah. Can we just try to, like, sneak? Sure. Out Everybody make a stealth check. Somewhere that would be open <laughs> to where we could... Chain gang sneak. Uh, in fact, outside of the tower. Chain gang sneak. Oh, seriously? They should all be at disadvantage, by the way. Well, I don't think that's going to affect me at all. <laughs> so, uh, Darby, I imagine you're quite frustrated as even with your manacles, you're somehow managing to make almost no noise. But you're not sure if maybe that's because your companions are making so much that it's drowning yours out. Um, despite all of this, however, the orcs have clearly drunk themselves into a stupor. Nobody was really paying attention to you guys as far as you can tell. And it's quite easy for you to slip off into the woods. Awesome. We made it. Okay. So let's just go out a little farther and see if we can't find the Twice King. Or Thrice King. Thrice King? What are you on about? Why would a king be looking for us? Because cause he's our boyfriend. Oh, right. This bat fellow. <laughs> That's what we're risking a lifetime of adventure for? We just got up the train. <laughs> Keep your panties on now that you're wearing them. What if I start talking louder then? <sighs> Don't you want to meet this Batman? Hey, take it Fine, easy. Take... We're not going to do anything. Fine, take me talk. to your boyfriend. This I have to see. Fine. <laughs> Follow my lead. I start walking exactly how she walks, but in a more exaggerated manner to make fun of her. <laughs> okay. Uh, in your manacles, this proves quite difficult, but you still, you know, the the sentiment is understood, I believe. Like, maybe if I'm, like, crouching a lot lower. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha, very <laughs> clever. Look at you. All okay. Right. So, uh, I guess give me a perception check or uh, investigation would be fine here. Or, nope. Eyeball. You're trying to track a bat. So, so survival? Yeah. You're okay. trying to track Probably down wonder. a creature. Anybody who's looking. Discord Tower or there, open. So. Um, tower, please. I mean, I'm not looking, so. Okay. Because this is so, ridiculous. <laughs> uh, despite everybody's best efforts, and including legitimately the best possible effort by Darby, uh, there are no <laughs> signs of a bat. 
you know, you 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 look and look and look, and eventually, uh, as you're kind of like pouring through the woods and just hoping for some sign of him and like trying to be obvious while also remaining hidden, uh, you find no bats. Uh, in fact, there's almost no wildlife whatsoever. You can imagine that the orcs have like it's very clear that the orcs are hunting these woods, uh, and like Anon notices this immediately, just being a, a ranger, but uh, perhaps doesn't say anything. But Darby, you would Darby and Petalin would both find some pretty obvious signs of orcs having hunted. Like um, there's even a, a couple of stray arrows with stone arrowheads, and um, you can see like marks in trees where other arrows have been fired in, or maybe an axe has gone, uh, um, st- stuff of that nature. And then before too much longer, um, I'd say you probably yeah a couple of different arrows you find, uh, but before too much longer you stumble right back into the wagon train. <sighs> home sweet home. Hey, has anybody has anybody noticed over the last you know since we've been with the the wagon train? Um, any, like, undead? Uh, I would say that they, they're not absent, okay. but less frequent. Mm. Like, less frequent to the point where we could make the assumption that maybe he's keeping them at rest or uh it could be that it could be the caravan itself you don't know you don't know yeah i'm not taking too much that we see from the world as it exists around the caravan as emblematic of anyone necessarily as you have found yourselves at the back of the wagon train uh you can now uh, perhaps explore some of the various creatures that are within it. You notice that there are some truly enormous cages, uh, as well as some that are like completely blacked out on all sides by like thick black cloth. Uh, just various means of containment that they that they have devised here. I go up to all the cages and say hi, in common and goblin. <laughs> Seeing if there's anyone um, I can talk. There would certainly be a few replies. Uh, some angry, some confused. Uh, <laughs> perhaps a couple of creatures that are, that are intelligent enough to recognize a human voice and uh, like they cower against the back of their cage when you see them and speak to them. We should go and talk to the other factors. Uh, Egg's going to give them, anyone who will listen to him, the solidarity. Discord cut you off, but but solidarity, we got it. (laughs) Yes, solidarity. That's what he's he's interested in telling anyone who he can talk to. I think the three of us work to kind of like pull you along as you're speaking. (laughs) <laughs> sure sure he's just trying to get the idea out there um in the interest of saving time uh before you guys are able to get to any of the factors you eventually find yourself surrounded by masks um they firmly but gently encourage you to return to the area that was prepared for you in the village via various mental projections and physical prodding. I guess I'll go back. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, I start walking. The, the the general idea that you get like through these projections is that they're like, oh, these poor things are lost again. We'll help them get back to where they're going. It's very condescending and, and patronizing. Um, so, the next morning... 
uh, as you were unable to engage in some of the revelry, you, you awake and don't find yourself with a splitting headache. But as you return to the caravan, you find yourselves much the ire of many of the other members who were forced to sleep in their cages and, and things like that. There are a couple of uh, veterans that cheer you on and, and congratulate you on, on surviving, uh, you know, the, the choosing, uh, as they called it. Um, but... It's business as usual as you're loaded back in and, and, and the caravan makes itself on its way again, this time uh, based off of your understanding of the area to the southwest, uh, like west-southwest. Does anybody want to try anything before the next checkpoint? Did my makeshift tools break at all? Um... No, I don't think they would have broken. It's just like the you you're gonna need maybe something a little with a little bit more oomph than fish hooks. I will take that resounding silence as a no, and we will move on. I mean, I guess I can keep carving arrows into the trees. Okay. As we go. Yeah. Um, uh, Egg's well, gonna spend his... Also gonna spend his breaks talking to people and spreading the idea of solidarity. Okay, that's Before fine. This is an opportunity to chat with factors, by the way, if you wanted to do oh, something like okay. that. Well, yeah. Then, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely like to do that. Oh, so instead of arrows? Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you approach some factors. Yeah, I'm just gonna ask around, like, to know if anybody else has any more clues, like Anon did, where, um, do they know where they're going? Do they know who this Orin, Aaron person, creature being is? Like, that kind of thing. Sure. So the the information you get from them basically just reaffirms everything that you were told by Anon. Like uh, some of them, like a lot of it is like uh, they heard it from someone who heard it from someone. And, and mm. there's there's no true origin to this this idea of an um, Arin or Aaron or whatever. And there's no real tangibility to it. But everybody has like this feeling that what they were told was true or like that whoever was clearly like knew what they were talking about or whatever whatever happens to be and and they all have the sense that it's a deity of some kind uh, they they the original rumor being that it is a being of great reverence uh to the masks and that you know sometimes factors will will clearly die but at other, other times they say that as factors grow nearer and nearer to the to the front of the caravan uh, they're often seen less and less as factors and more and more as like pets of the caravan and like the the way they're treated. And so they, they caution you against uh, uh, getting too close for fear that you too might be absorbed into the masks or uh, disappear and no longer, you know, never be seen again. Um, the, in, in all of your walks, and let's say that you've got like four or five days to, to talk to people, the, the most, or rather, the, probably the newest piece of information you get is that someone believes that you are heading to uh, a place called Overlook because that's where they were captured. And he says that they, they've gone around uh, the whole of Nightfall, as he recalls it. And so it would make sense that they are soon returning to their origin. Hmm. And he said, like, th this factor would say that he's been with them a long time uh, but he's closer to the back because he, he constantly tries to escape, um, uh, but that he saw their ships arrive. Uh, and as he grew, as he went closer to an investigate as they were capturing some beast of the sea is when he was initially captured along with his group, uh, though they have long since perished and it's him. And I'd say probably actually one of his children. So let, let's say he and his daughter are the, are the surviving factor pair of his original group. So he he would think that they're returning to their ships at Overlook. Yes. Hmm. 
the only thing you would notice about my character is he's getting maybe a little more distant, a little less open. Is it something? Uh, Egg is just upset at on a. You keep you keep getting shit on by Discord. Egg is upset. Sorry. Uh, that we might be getting put on a boat. This idea troubles him. <laughs> he no longer has his ring of water walking. <laughs> <laughs> Pedalin, you were saying. Oh, I would, I would ask Anon if he's being quiet because, uh, because I, uh, drag them out into the wilderness unnecessarily. Uh, he would respond with just, like, shaking his head. He's like, no. Just kind of, like, closed off a little bit. Is this something that you, Paul, would like the group to investigate? or is Well, this if they a, push a, a little bit more, like, sure. maybe so, something. So, rem remember, they can't read your mind, so yeah, like, yeah. you can speak out of character and kind of detail your intentions or whatever. Like, maybe I could roll, or rather not, maybe is there a way for me to see if he's upset? Like, by the way, the look on his face, or is it just like he's, you know, lost no, in thought? Or... Not upset, really. More like. Just a little um... more distant. But he. He's not, like, mean about it, if that makes sense. Hmm. I'd ask him if he's remembering something from this area of Nightfall that makes him distant. I mean, if I can make a suggestion, why doesn't somebody just ask why he's being distant? <laughs> well, that's uh, literally what I just did. I just did it in a roundabout way. Uh, egg in politician mode would oh, ask no. him what troubles him. And... He's... Try to encourage him to show solidarity with the group. <laughs> <laughs> solidarity, your, brother. You and your stupid solidarity speech. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Um, no, at that point, he'll just be kind of like, listen, together we've done some amazing things and I barely know any of you. However, this is the first time in my life that I feel like I'm doing something. This group has led me to places... We had a cheering standing ovation, and you just want to leave for some reason. I don't understand what's so important. We're making our way up the chain. We're almost yeah, there. You're... The chain of the chain that binds us, the chain that enslaves us. What else are you going to do out there? At least we're fighting and making some people happy, giving some entertainment. For once, we could be heroes here. At, at this point... We could fight for ourselves. And where will that get point... us? Dead? <laughs> Nameless? <laughs> you can find only true glory when you can act on your own, through your own power, and for yourself. But, at this point, I'd like to launch into a very long and detailed story outlining our escapades and adventures... <laughs> Seeing as how Anon cares very much about the adventure and the next great act and being heroes. And I tell him how we're the heroes of Treetop and the saviors of Spira and all of it. Just word vomit. Just bleh. <laughs> yes, yes, I've read all about Spira. Just because you've heard yeah. of a name in a book doesn't mean that it exists. Uh... It's not no, just totally the name in the back. book to us. You. Oh, what was my title that they gave me? You happen to be looking at the creator of Spira, the saviors of Spira, all three of us. Uh huh. You We've and your boyfriend, there. Bat, that I keep hearing so you much leave about. Him but out yet, of this. but yet you have yet to produce. <laughs> Listen. All I'm saying is that you three are obviously more special than anyone else here, and we work good as a group together. 
but why would I leave obvious glory here? For this, promises this of a dead city and bats that are thrice kings. This glory has a low ceiling. <laughs> there are greater trees to climb. Hmm. Plus, the bad thing is a recent development. We're still trying to iron that one out. <laughs> Obviously. Well, you can count on my arrows to back you up as long as we're together. But I'm not going to continue getting myself on the line to the back of the bus because you three seem to have some delusions. I tell him that we appreciate his companionship and that he's joined us and we'll we'll get to the front of the chain. Indeed. I know we will. And then you will see that there likely is nothing better out there. All right. So after several more days in the wagon train, uh, you come across, you come upon a coastal cliffside, um, where like for probably two or three days you travel along this co this coast uh, until eventually you come to stop. Uh, it looks uh, what looks to be uh, maybe a, a like a sort of well at the edge of the cliff, and uh, from where you are within your cage, you don't have a, a huge vantage point, but you can kind of make what looks to be like several much larger islands out in the water. Um, but here at this well, the wagon train draws up in a circle and, uh, you, you hear the familiar horn and, uh, perhaps to your dismay or, or even your delight, a mask approaches your cage. Uh, and it is here that you are once again selected to hunt. You will now see my character perk up a little bit. Like it's showtime sort of thing. Um... The means in which you are approached is a little bit different. It is only a single mask approaching you this time. Uh, in fact, you don't even see any others around. Uh, just the one. And uh, as they approach, uh, you see the expression change from a smile to a dour and grim, just like almost featureless expression on the face of what looks to be uh, some sort of reptile or lizard. Um, it approaches you and unlocks the cage, and uh, as you exit, you see the creature bow to you. And Anon, you've seen this perhaps once before, and it was um, maybe very shortly after you were first captured. One of the lead caravans where they, the factors were let out, uh, there were several masks involved at this point. And they, you know, they, they were bowed to, they went into their place, they were never seen again, and no retrieval was sent. Like, they just packed up and left. So, uh, the mask bows to you and gestures you toward the, the series of chests. And, uh, like, what is granted or what is given to you is um, you can take up to three magic items, three weapons, armor, and... Uh, five uh, adventuring items. So I'm assuming nine, that they're like dropping us items. off. Um, I don't know hey, if that if that's the assumption you want to go with. Sure. I'm just going to look at them and be like, what's the target? Uh, oh, right. That's what I was about to do. question um so as far as gear and magic items and things go is the hole here yeah 
can we tell based on the stuff that the hole has been emptied and now all the stuff that was in the hole is kind of laid out? I would presume so, yes. Mm. If you knew the contents of the hole. Uh, how many items could we take again? Three magic items. Oh, what was the... Nine, nine total. Okay. Three weapons, five magic items, one armor. Or five adventuring items, one armor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does that bow count as a weapon or a magic item? Or both, I guess. Yes, it's it's both. It's both, yeah, okay. Does anyone have any open magic slots? Um, uh, shouldn't I we can. all? We have a long rest, don't we? Oh, no, you mean for no. items? From what we can take, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I have wanna... one. Because we should probably take the uh, the haversack, even if it's empty. Oh, I have a haversack as one of my items. Oh, okay. But I mean, you three wouldn't know that? Because it would just look like a sack anyway, I guess. But it looks oddly like the sack we have. Same make and model and everything. Well, is there a reason to take the sack There's over your sketch. the hole? <laughs> okay. This is like a legit suicide mission, then I guess. What is that supposed? I don't know what that is. That could be one of like a million things. That could so be anything. Is yep. these wings <laughs> coming out the back of it? Oh, they're turkey legs. They're its lungs <laughs> on the outside. I like its little angry red eye. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, so as you're gearing up and getting ready, and after they hand you the little marker with the, the sketch on it, uh, it points to the sun and then uh, shows you on its on its on one of its left hands uh, the number three. Yeah, got it. And, it, and then in your, in your mind, you see the caravan leaving. Hmm. You better not without us i just say after that um in your mind you also see the eye amulets and like they well basically they explode oh like in three days it's That's going to so explode good. and they're leaving mm -hmm. Uh, 
uh, like the eye amulets will will explode. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like we're seeing I mean, the consequence. We get the sense that... So we get the sense that when they explode, it's basically like having a hand grenade around your neck, or is it just like a little? Uh, so I think you were closer with the first one. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's a glitter bomb. Although that would be more annoying. Uh, Darby, are Pocket you taking sand. your pistol? Mm-hmm. Have you summoned it? Not yet, no. Let's say you have, because we're going to end session here. Um, as you as you summon the pistol, uh, it it takes a moment of silent, like noted silence, uh, and and a voice fills your head. Uh, rather than speaking aloud as though it typically does. Uh, so the the patron's voice just fills your head with laughter. And uh, you hear, most intriguing. I detect the unmistakable presence of myself, mixed with a memory, a brat I'd nearly forgotten. Powerful, secretive, and oh so cunning how she begged for my favor, always eager to trade for power. Either you enter, and I reclaim a bit of what was lost, or you enter, and it claims you. Either way, I win. I'm curious to see if she achieved her goal. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, indeed. Dope. All right. Yeah, we're going to end session there, so if anybody has any uh, last comments they want to add, go ahead and toss them in there, um, and then we'll hash out the details for next session. Can I know what the giant said, or is it story-related stuff? Um, uh, let's see. Let me go up. No, that was the here. Turns. Also, I just wanted to make it clear in case the group, like, somehow didn't understand. My character is developing Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, I, yes, think, I, I think we get that. Okay. The question is, none of us know how to snap you out of it. I mean, spoiler alert, it's not going to be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> But like the power of friendship. But like when you're role playing, it's not you don't want to just be like, it'll be okay. Don't worry, my character doesn't really mean this. That's like <laughs> Unless of course you do nothing to stop him. And then in which case, like, why would he <laughs> like if you yeah. try a little bit, I'm sure it'll work out. <laughs> Holy like, shit. Run off without telling him. That giant has a potty mouth, man. <laughs> I wanted to see how it would come out. <laughs> Yikes. Um, second question. What was the language of the test you were doing? Like, what script uh, was that? Primordial. Neat. Okay. And this is what this I typed. This just sounds like you cursing and not like a giant. Well, you guys couldn't understand it, so yeah. <laughs> I hope you realize anytime we speak to a primordial now, that's what I'm going to see think it's saying every time. All right, any questions, comments, concerns before we end? Oh, man. Nah, I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, I am going to be in DFW next weekend. So I'm going to be I'm going to be in Texas for my brother's birthday. So I'm not available to play. Um, the weekend after that. I'm not sure, but Susanna and I, depending on tomorrow, like, either tomorrow, this will happen or this will happen in two weeks. And Paul, are you streaming? Uh, I'll go offline now. 